Hey guys, this is Jerry again from Jerry's Room. In the first part of this video, we were talking about um, exporting audio from Ableton Live to uh, then import it into a different DAW uh, for Mix Engineer, for example. Um, now this is the last part, uh, the last thing, the last thing I wanted to talk about was when you want to print your MIDI. Now why would you want to print MIDI when you're sending stuff to a mix engineer? Uh, say for example, I don't like the sound of uh, this kick. Uh, let's take a look. Let's have a listen. So let's say, you know, I just picked that kick. I just picked that kick because I needed the kick. What if I wanted the entire drum set? To be, uh, to be, you know, redone with samples from somebody else that I know or from the mix engineer himself. What I could do is print all my MIDI along with my audio. The only thing I would have to think of once again is make sure that I make a selection from beginning to end, but also I would have to consolidate. So I'd make, make a selection on my kick track, for example, all the way from the beginning to the end. Right click or just Command J, consolidate. This makes one giant MIDI clip from start to finish, not finish of the song, but finish of the kicks, um, from the very beginning of the song to the end of the last kick, um, into a one big MIDI clip, which I can then export using Shift Command E. This will make uh, a .mid file, which you can then give along with the audio to the mix engineer and say, please, you know, uh, use this to and and use a, use a great kick sample on there because I didn't really have one. You can do that just fine, uh, and he'll he'll have your kick. It'll be the same timing. He'll just use a different sample. Uh, this is also a good way to save uh, to back up a session, maybe in case you might lose your uh, your project file, or if you're particularly uh, uh, bad at um, file management, this might be a good safeguard as well. Also, one thing that you should do, as you can see, I've made this exports for mix um, folder underneath this uh, project folder. If I go in there, you can see I've already saved like my even kicks and sub midi kicks. Like I could just name this kicks dot mid, save it along with all my audio file in this same little folder. That way, I will have one folder containing all my midi, all my audio from second zero to the end of the song, and I will be able to just zip that, put it on Google Drive or Gobbler or Dropbox, whatever you use, uh, or just we transfer it send it all to uh, your mix engineer, and voila, you're done. Um, so one thing that your mix engineer might also ask is if you're happy with the sound, say, of your drum kit. Let's say that I'm happy with this sound. Now, if I send all of this as a stereo track to my mixer, he might ask that I put, say, that um, subby little kick sample in there on a separate track. Now. How do I do this really quickly without, you know, taking way too much time? Well, you do something similar. You will right click, you'll make selection from beginning to end, you'll consolidate. Then you can duplicate your track. Uh, Command D or just duplicate, right click and duplicate. Now I have a complete double of this track. And um, the sound that I needed was this little kick sample. So let's have a listen. Make sure you put this on. Let's go to that MIDI clip of, this, of the duplicate track that I made. Let's make you, to be on the safe side, name this drums double. And let's find that kick sample that the mix engineer wants me to isolate. So let's have a listen. Let's make sure I solo the right track. That's not it. There we go. That's clearly more of a sort of kick sample. And you know your your mix engineer might ask what's it doing along with all these high frequency informations like slaps, uh, claps, and uh, snares. So let's see and let's separate those two. Um, how you could easily do that is you could select all of the other information in this double, everything that's not a kick sample, and just press delete. Don't worry, you still have your original right here. And remember, we've also saved this, so to speak, as, as a different project. Now, all that's in this track right here is only this kick sample. Now, this is perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Now I can print this as a separate track. I can do Shift Command R. I can select Drums Dub. And I can just print it. Can, I can convert it to mono. If it's a kick, that's mono. In this case, it's a little bit of a stereo difference. 
Um, and then uh, what do I do with my original drum track, which still has that kick in there? Well, you just do the exact opposite. You select that kick. Let's have a listen if we have the right sample. And we just press delete here. Now I have two different tracks. Now I can literally say drums, claps, and snares. Claps and snares and hats. There we go, whatever you want to call it. And I can even change this name to Subby Kick. And now you can print all of this as separate MIDI information if you want the samples to be replaced, or if you just want to keep, you know, you're happy with the sound, you can uh, print this now uh, as different audio files to send to your mix engineer. And there you go. Your mix engineer will have one track that has all of the high-end information, slaps, claps, snares, whatever. And he will have one track that has all of your sub kicks. Uh, in this case, that means he will have two kick tracks, but that's fine. He can, he can work with that. Um, this way, um, it'll be easier for him to EQ this track and that track separately because, of course, this one has much more low end in it than this one does. It's a different EQ, different compression that he might use. So there you go. You've made it easier on your mix engineer and it will certainly benefit your mix, your eventual mix that you're going to get a lot. Uh, there are some examples though, which like this one have a lot of uh, samples in it and it's all over the place. This might take a long time to separate into different tracks. But also if you listen to it, it's already pretty mixed. I mean, samples are pretty much the same volume. It's all from the same sampled song. Uh, bonus to anybody who recognizes it. Uh, so those samples are in there um, and you can just print this as a stereo track and probably the mix engineer won't have to do much to this. Uh, just once again, remember to remove any volume automation or even panning automation in this case. There you go. And it's li slightly panned. You might want to pan it center and leave the panning decision up to the mix engineer. Again, some of this is a gray area and you might have to communicate with your mix engineer about this kind of stuff. Right? Do I take away this volume automation or does it nicely tie up to what I wanted to do? Uh, maybe it doesn't, maybe I'll just leave him to do that, I'll just delete this automation and we'll be on the safe side. So please communicate with your mix engineer and you should be able to figure out small details like that. If you have any questions, please make sure to comment on the YouTube video. Uh, please subscribe, my next video will be about uh, acoustic baffles, probably. And uh, uh, make sure to check out jerrysroom.com. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for listening, for any comments. Uh, on this video, it's the first one I did. Um, if it's unclear in any way, or if I went too fast, please ask and I will uh, see if I can make a better edit, a better try of it next time. All right, thanks a lot, guys, and see you next time.